is St. Patrick's Day, and many people think of Guinness, but they think of that dark stout Riaz. Coming up next, we're going to talk other options by Guinness. A little bit of a special twist in that many people, I think Daryl probably think, oh, green beer, St. Patrick's Day. Well, first of all, I probably think St. Patrick's Day. Let's all get drunk, and of course, it's not just. It's not about getting drunk. Just it's, about and that. it's definitely not about green beer. Uh, but what we do have are some other beer alternatives, especially for people who are not into that big, heavy, rich stout that comes along. So the Guinness family actually includes a lot of other beers besides Guinness. Okay. Uh, so why don't we start out, we'll pour a little bit. This is Harp. Harp is your standard European lager. So for people that like what oh, Stella, Heineken, okay. Budweiser, Canadian, that sort of thing. That This is the same kind of beer, a nice, uh, clean, crisp lager. Here, I'll give you a little bit there. All right. All and right. you were saying that we should taste a familiarity on oh, this Oh, absolutely. Kind of beer. You've known this beer. Now, as far as the pouring, a lot of people pour so that it runs along the side of the glass. Well, when you pour down the uh, side of the glass, what you're trying to do is you, you, you're trying to avoid the foam. And that tends to actually be more from um, our North American style lagers. The way you pour that is actually perfect. Uh, what I you're poured a few beer there you go. in my time. Uh, what you're looking for is exactly you want that little bit of head because you're releasing the aromatics of the beer. You actually want to smell and taste uh, these, these beers. This is a visceral experience. These are not cheap industrial beer. And this is more of a red beer. Yeah, this is Smithix. So okay. it looks like Smith Wicks, but it's pronounced Smithix. So this is a classic premium red ale, Irish red. Oh, I like that a lot. Mm. I like that a lot. Just a couple of great options that use the Guinness name, but not that, I guess, that uh, typical stout that people yeah. think of. We're going to learn how to pour the perfect Guinness the original Guinness coming up in the next segment, Riaz. And you know, the parade was yesterday, but people still partying today for St. Patrick's Day. So we're at Legacy Liquor, where, of course, everyone thinks of the traditional Guinness. We're going to pour the perfect pint coming up next on BT. Stay with us. And it's the beer that everyone thinks of on this day, Daryl. We are talking about the traditional Guinness. We are talking about Guinness, absolutely. Which most people would say if it's not coming out of a tap, it's not traditional. It's true. I mean, the, the best Guinness, you're going to head down to a place like Doolin's Irish Pub uh, down on Granville Street and have a proper pint. But for those of us that either can't go to bars like me, I got a toddler, uh, or uh, uh, you don't have a draft tap at home, we've got... Guinness in the can. So here's how to properly pour it the best you can. Absolutely. Well, Guinness spent a lot of money developing the widget. We can hear it inside. And what that's going to do is release nitrogen throughout the beer. You can hear it. Foams oh, up nicely. Yeah. And then you want to pour it into the center of the glass. And we want lots of head. That we you were do. saying before that lets the aromatics through and because we're dealing with a nitrogenated beer, it's not going to get a big foamy head like say uh, an industrial lager. This is going to do its nice creamy Pour. Now this is not a beginner beer, I have to say. Uh, I mean, it took me a while to even like beer as it was, but uh, then you get something like a stout that is... Uh, stout's a big, it's powerful, a rich beer. That's why beer. we talked about Harp and mm -hmm. stuff and the other, but for me, you gotta have Guinness. And to properly taste Guinness, just drink it or do you wanna... Uh, well, I've always been a fan of just letting it roll on the tongue. You wanna taste everything, because you got the savory, the brininess. It's almost like a meal, really. By the way, mm. get home responsibly, Michelle. Anyone that wants to know anything about anything boozy, you talk to this guy. He knows his stuff here at Legacy Liquor. But yes, if you are going out and celebrating, imbibing today, make sure you get home safely. Take a cab or, of course, transit. Very, very smart indeed. And Don, I actually learned something today with I would have tilted the glass to pour the Guinness. So very good information there. Whoa, Night, look at Don. This. <laughs> right? Yeah. Christmas look is at come this early. is just for me. Exactly. You know, I was I was tweeting out that you know people talk about the luck of the Irish. I'm not. Irish, but I'm certainly lucky to be hanging out at Legacy Liquor Store. We're going to talk Irish whiskey next. What's the difference between Irish whiskey and Scotch whiskey? And it's not just the region. Stay with us. You're watching BT. I know it's like I need an excuse to have some cocktails on breakfast television, right? <laughs> I mean, today is the day that many people will be imbibing a little bit, although we want to point out that it's not all about the booze for the Irish. No. But Irish whiskey is a big one. Uh, absolutely. Irish whiskey is on fire. It wasn't always that way. Uh, in the past, there were over 400 distilleries in Ireland. By 1975, there were two. 
Um, Irish whiskey uh, was always kind of thought of as the smaller cousin to the, the Scotch whiskey. And what is the biggest difference between Scotch whiskey and Irish whiskey? There's a couple of big differences. The first one is the amount of times you distill it, uh, dist um, distill your spirit. In Scotland, you tend to distill twice. In Ireland, they distill three times. The more you distill, the smoother uh, the product tends to get. So this should be quite smooth. Oh, yeah. We've got some great options here, some well-known brands. Absolutely. So uh, what we have here are a couple of the, uh, the John James in line. Uh, I've got the, the entry level, which is just a fantastic uh, bottle of whiskey, especially under $40. Cheers. Is that how we to cheers? I mean, I just feel yeah, like we have glasses. Okay. It's, it's the time. So mm. we're smelling for what? Well, what you're always looking for is that nice richness, that creaminess, the vanilla. Um, Irish whiskey tends to be aged in bourbon casks. Jameson are all done in wild turkey barrels, so you're going to get some of those bourbony notes mm -hmm. as well. Mm. Now, I notice there really is only one that's got an aged number on here. Why that? Why is that? Uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first off, um, the age statement is always the oldest whiskey in the blend. So the the longer you have to age the whiskey, the more expensive that whiskey is going to be. The other thing is, because Ireland is so much further south than Scotland, their evaporation rates are faster. So their whiskey matures faster. In our market, we've been trained that the higher the number, the better. Right. Uh, not always true, uh, but that's just what we believe. And so uh, what we're seeing is people moving away from age statements because they can make a finished whiskey in seven to 10 years. And there are also some great artisan versions, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So the artisanal whiskey uh, industry is starting to grow in uh, in Ireland. The Tyrconnell in the middle, uh, it was actually a very famous brand, especially in the 20s and 30s, uh, eventually went out of business. That's Cooley Distillery. They reopened in the mid 1990s. And uh, now there's uh, about four or five distilleries in Ireland. No. Wonderful. Well, the one thing they do is they know their uh, they know their spirits here <laughs> at Legacy Liquor. Also, really specializing Riaz in some of the um, artisanal type of um, alcohol, whether it's beer or certainly Irish whiskey. For more details on Legacy, you can of course go to their website. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, you know, when we think St. Patrick's Day, we traditionally think of the traditional Guinness. But you know what? In BC, we love our craft beer. We've got local options that fit the bill. Coming up next, live from Legacy Liquor in Athletes Village. Stay with us. We're going beyond Guinness because it's not just about the official Irish beer because in BC, we love our craft beers, our local BC brew, and you got some great options. Absolutely, we do love our local craft beer, and so what we got is a couple of different options. The first one I'm gonna show you is the uh, Luck of the Irish Red Ale from uh, Russell Brewing, of course, from Surrey. Uh, so we tried the Smithix Red Ale from Ireland, so this is kind of their take on it. Mm -hmm. Very refreshing. Nice and clean, yeah. well made. Very effervescent. Absolutely. Um, yeah, a little less like thick than, than Smithix. The other one I wanted to show you is the uh, Mill Street Cobblestone Stout. So Mill Street, they always wanted to sell this stout. They wouldn't sell it because they couldn't make it right because they needed that widget. They need that nitrogen. Guinness doesn't share the widget. They spent a lot of money on that and they won't share. Mill Street actually went and developed their own. So we're going to pour. So this would be our local version of a of Guinness, Guinness style. That's beer. right. Okay. So we're gonna do our pour. And as you're pouring that too, you made a very interesting comment off air that people could probably expect beer prices to go up. Why? Uh, well, it uh, mostly has to do with the U.S. dollar. It's a, a huge effect. We buy a lot of our hops, bottles, things like that out of the U.S. So to lose 10% right off the bat, tough endeavor. So you're going to see more, less hoppy beers like stouts and reds. Okay. And that is very tasty, a mm. very good alternative to your traditional Guinness. And then you got to talk quickly about this one here. You said this one's almost like a milkshake. Yeah, that's the N2 Milk Stout from Parallel 49. So it's made with lactose sugar. And so, yeah, essentially it's a milkshake beer. How many calories? A uh, fair amount of calories. But you know what? When it's St. Patrick's Day, let's not Did, bother counting those. Didn't you say something like 400 calories? Yeah, about that. Just 400 <laughs> calories. But it's definitely a treat as many people will be indulging this St. Patrick's Day, Riaz. Uh, a reminder just please, please, please get home safely. Be responsible, especially if you are, are imbibing in the beer. And, and let's say no to green beer. No, no to green, green beer. Don't, beer. Don't bother that. Nobody <laughs> needs to drink bad beer dyed green. <laughs> More details on Legacy. Swing on by here, Athletes Village. They know their stuff.